Hi guys, this is Johnny Hunkins, Popular Hot Riding Magazine, and we are here today with our 1968 Valiant Project car at Outlaw Motorsports in Riverside, California. And we're here today to install a set of Willwood 11-inch Dynalite brakes on the front of the car. Now what we have here is a set of 11-inch rotors and some Dynalite dual piston calipers down here. We're also going to be installing a Willwood Master Cylinder, and Riley Motorsports has provided us with a adapter uh, plate goes on the firewall that's going to allow us to put that GM style master cylinder on our Mopar with no problems. So we're actually in the process of trial fitting our rotor onto our, what we have here is a Mustang 2 Pinto, Pinto style uh, spindles and that's a very common mod for cars. We have the Riley Motorsports suspension so it has the Pinto spindles so we're uh, we're just starting here today, and we want to show you a couple things about what's going on here. It's pretty straightforward installation, so it's not going to be very uh, very step-by-step, -step, but we wanted to kind of show you the quality of the hardware here and some tricks and tips for getting this uh, wired up, plumbed up, and so forth. So hang out and check out the action. The Willwood 11-inch Dynalite kit starts out with this hub rotor assembly. You actually have to assemble it. It's uh, got three parts. The, you got your hub here, which you need to install the studs with some thread locking compound. And then you've got the adapter, which kind of sandwiches the both uh, the two. And then on top of it, you've got the rotor, which attaches with five fasteners to the adapter. So once that's assembled, you can put it onto the spindle. Um, so that's going to be next. You've got these brackets right here that the calipers attach to, and they are specific to the side. So left side on the left side, right side on the right side. You have three 3 16 inch Allen bolts that go into the spindles. And you just want to put a little bit of Loctite on those before you cinch them up. One thing we noticed about the brackets is there's several holes drilled into them. It looks like they actually fit in either different types of spindles or maybe there's different versions of the Mustang II spindle. But at any rate, you want to just experiment around with the clocking of this bracket on the spindle. Make sure that you get a combination that works. It's not terribly critical uh, as long as you get three of these holes to line up. Well, the wheel bearings have been packed and now the rotor hub assembly has been installed with the packed wheel bearings and now the castellated nut is going on and shortly Ron's going to put that cotter pin in there to lock it all in place. That dust cap screws on after you're done. It's a really nice looking piece. I don't know if I even want to put the hub cap on. These fine thread 3 8 inch bolts right here are what bolt the caliper to the bracket. And since the Willwood caliper is not self-centering type, you have to experiment around with the shims that come with it. Now there's a, there's a selection of shims, and what, what you want ideally is for the caliper to end up centered right in the middle of the rotor. Now this Willwood Dynalite caliper is a really compact four piston design and it fits in a space that normally a really small single piston caliper would fit such as a D52 or something like that. So it's a real popular uh, caliper for a compact brake system like the one on this 11 inch rotor. So uh, giving you maximum amount of stopping power in a very compact package. That's something that's uh, Muscle, muscle car guys really like a lot when they want to retain a stock looking wheel like we do.
the new wheel with flexible line is a dash three fitting and it's going to have to attach to the chassis brake line and you have to put this adapter fitting in there first before you attach this flexible brake line which is what Ron's going to do next. The Willwood line and caliper does not use a crush washer and a banjo fitting like some of the other systems out there. That's actually a little bit simpler and and uh, could be a little bit safer. Not that the banjo fitting and the crush washer is uh, unsafe. It's just that you really have to be careful with setting that up to make sure that you get the exact seal perfect. Um, this is really simple, fast, and it's pretty foolproof. We want to mount this Willwood master cylinder on our Mopar. We're retaining our manual brake, so this is a 7 8 inch bore diameter. Uh, but the only problem we really have is that it's got a GM style bolt pattern on the end of it. And to get it to fit on the four bolt pattern on the firewall, we have this adapter assembly, real simple deal from Riley Motorsports. And it simply just goes on the end here. You bolt it to the plate with the two bolts, and then that bolts to the stock four bolts on the firewall. Well, this Clevis adapter that comes with the uh, Riley Motorsports kit is kind of cool. Tell us what's going on there, Ron. Well, it's a Chrysler adapter, um, so you can run the factory bolt on the pedal assembly and give you the correct length for the Wheelwood Master Cylinder install. Cool. Yeah, one of the cool things we wanted to point out about this Wheelwood Master Cylinder is that it's got uh, redundant inlets so that uh, you can plumb your brakes from either side, either the engine side or the fender side. So obviously you're going to plug those up if you're not going to use them. This is a stock proportioning valve that was on our car from the factory and it's designed for the drum brakes. We're moving up to disc brakes at all four corners so we're going to put this adjustable proportioning valve on from Willwood. and one of the big things here that you see is the dial on the side and that allows us to adjust the bias for front and rear so that if we want a little bit more rear brake or a little bit less rear brake we can just adjust the dial so that we get all four wheels working the same when we're in a braking area. Ron just created this rear brake line that's going to go into our Willwood Master Cylinder. And it's kind of an art form, you know, you've got to bend it in a creative way to where the fittings are going to meet and uh, you have to use a special flaring tool and stuff. So if this is not something you're prepared to do, if you don't have all the right tools for it, you're probably better off leaving it to a pro like Ron. Ron, you just finished doing that real slick rear line for our Wheelwood Master Cylinder. Uh, tell us a little bit about the tools of the trade. Start out telling us about this brake line right here. Where can they get that stuff? Um, this you can get at any local auto parts store. It's just 3 16 uh, mild steel brake line. Um, they always come double flared, 45. Um, and what kind of fittings are on the end? Um, 3 16 um, You can use, if you do a lot of them, you'd probably want to prefer a hydraulic. A lot faster, a little bit easier. That's a real professional looking this, system there. Right, and it it does from 3 16ths all the way to 3 8 hard line. What's something like this cost buying it off the tool truck? Uh, you'll probably be around the 450 range. Right on. Guys don't really have to spend that much, though, do they? No. Um, you can go and get some that's probably in about the $50 range at your local parts house. 
and this will do the same job. Harbor Freight, something like that. Even Eastwood. Harbor Freight, yeah. Right on. It, uh, this comes with everything. You got a tubing bender there. You got a cutter. You even have uh, flaring dies. Right. And what sizes? One, and this one will go from three three sixteenths all the way to three eighths also. Right on. Well, all the plumbing's pretty much done, with the exception of a little distribution tee that goes right here that splits the front brakes between the left and right side. We're going to have to track that down to an auto parts store, but for the day, we're done. Well, that's Willwood's 11-inch Dynalite kit for Mustang two spindles. You can check out the complete installation on Project Valiant in the February 2014 issue of Popular Hot Riding Magazine. <laughs>